Hello, good evening, and welcome to our second catch-up with Star Trek promoter Steve Reese. We last spoke with Steve uh, back in December, where we exclusively confirmed the return of Bradford to the Formula One calendar. Since then, a lot has happened, including the release of the Formula One fixture list. So now is a great time to have another catch-up with Steve. Steve, thank you so much for doing this this evening. Good evening. Um, happy Easter. Yeah. Well, I thought about you on, I think it was Tuesday. I sat outside, shorts and t-shirt, um, in, in the glorious sunshine. I thought, I'll look at what the weather's going to be like on, on over the Easter weekend. And then it's going to snow on Monday. And I thought, that's typical bank holiday Easter stock car weather, is that? Actually, I was at Oddsall yesterday, I think <laughs> about, about nine o'clock, and uh, it was freezing cold and like a sea yeah. threat. <laughs> But the forecast actually is cold over the weekend, but uh, yeah. the crew have got a weekend off with being a bank holiday, so we start working on Tuesday. Yes, good. It's not, it doesn't look very nice Monday at all. Um, right, okay, so let's, let's jump in and deal, I guess, with the big question first. So with the release of the Formula One fixture list a couple of weeks ago, there was the confirmation of the date for the Formula One World Final, but there was no venue attached to that. Um, I guess, why was that? And are we in a position where we can confirm where the Formula One World Final will be held in 2021? Well, we've been working tires, tirelessly, particularly with Bradford, and it consumes sort of every waking hour. We had hoped to release it or confirm it this weekend. Yeah. However, we have still got a lot of dots to cross, uh, to, to dot and T's to cross. So we have decided that we will confirm it finally next Saturday on the uh, 10th. Um, the reason for that is it's huge, it's huge for us. It's a huge decision for the sport. Um, we've got to do what's right for the sport. For, for the sort of 450 people that had already bought tickets and supported us for Kings Lynn before they came off sale. Um, if it's to go to Walsall, we've still got some, some, some things to finish off planning wise. And um, I think, you know, more importantly, we need to get this right. And our Dutch colleagues play a big part in this. And we're in constant dialogue and due to speak to uh, Henry over this bank holiday weekend because you know we've got to monitor what's happening in holland and we, you know our dutch colleagues are very part and part of the world finals so i would beg people to just be patient uh for seven days and uh we should be able to reveal all then yeah but i want to be ready yeah like i say it is a huge decision to make isn't it i mean it is your world final and you want to do what's right for yourself and for the sport as well I think that's the, the key criteria. I mean, whichever decision we end up making, and, and, and trust me, it, you know, it's a heavy weight of a burden of a decision. We're not going to please everybody no. um, because there's a lot of expectation, you know, for odds I and mean, in the north. Got to also look at it. You know, we did intend to retire December last year. We have we've got on with odds with a passion to leave a legacy for something behind. But we've also got to be conscious for us that this will probably be the only world final we'll have the opportunity to run because yeah. obviously it's on a rotor basis because um, I will be 67 or 68 come the next one. And I really sincerely hope to be a spectator then if I'm still breathing oxygen. Yes. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> OK, right. So, so the plan is next Saturday will final confirmation of where it's going to be held. That's yeah. And I think, again, by this for format, we're hoping to do this from Odsall so they can have, people can have a look at Odsall, you know, sneak preview of it as a little bit of backup information to what to look forward to when Odsall reopens and the work we've done there. Yeah, brilliant. OK, um, so let's just move on to Od Odsall um, uh, next then. So when we spoke in December, it was very much we're going to start work and sort of three months on, you very much have started work and I think that you, you have posted uh, various bits on social media so we can see the transformation of the stadium but it, it is a huge project you've undertaken and I guess you didn't really believe it would be that big when we spoke back in December. Uh, in December it looked quite simple, yeah. uh, basically putting a track in a fencing you know, which we'd planned, we'd costed. The costs had gone up enormously from when we originally quoted it um, to start the construction in January because of the pandemic. 
Yeah. Um, you know, things like steel plate went up from the cheapest quote being 19,000 to the to when we talked about it to order it back, that had gone up to 31,000. Um, but once we started work in January, um, it became like unpeeling an onion. And I've <laughs> got to be honest, if we knew what we've had to do um, 12 months ago, yeah. I don't think we'd be talking about this today. I, I mean, I can't begin to tell you people who've been around and involved in it i've seen it unfold but for example what seemed reasonably straightforward in uh, built on the tracking building a fence uh, it had to become a construction site okay. uh, and that runs under 92 pages of a cdm report oh, wow. and for somebody like us who's quite alien to that environment uh, having to put health and safety person in person, which is a considerable uh, added cost, restrictions, work practices, uh, that, that has been mammoth. Yeah. Um, also for pride in, in working out what the RFA was, the landlords were prepared to do in rebooting the stadium. Our passion for how we wanted it to look. Um, <laughs> that, that is itself taking a, you know, a huge amount of work. We can see now, and you'll see next week, sort of for yourself, we can see the vision now. I yeah. mean, it's been a team effort. You know, we, we have paid different contractors, and but we've tried to keep it within the sport. I mean, the most recent one that's been on site for about three weeks has been travelling up from Norfolk, and that's Carl Gilbert. Yeah. And, uh, you know, his efforts um, makes the place look stunning. Yeah. You know, sort of anybody wants to do any business and sort of the type of work we're doing, hugely encourage them to contact uh, Carl because very reasonably priced, very hard work. Finished yesterday about four o'clock for the Easter weekend to travel back to Norfolk and back again on Tuesday. And there's another week to 10 days work there as we've put extras onto the job that we gave him. Yes. But I think the most, I mean, I'm quite amazed that Carl managed to paint the entire stock car fence inside and out in a day really and it, and it really looks stunning it took me three weeks to paint my fence in my back garden so. it did, it did. <laughs> uh you know they have worked very hard and if you you know if you follow the pictures on facebook and so the before and like, as it's finishing now yeah. it, it is hugely different yeah i'm very much looking forward to like i say coming up there next week um, announcing the world final venue and also kind of seeing the, the progress we've made. Um, but I guess from what I've seen as well, there's been a huge groundswell of support from within the sport to, you know, through financial donations and through help to kind of get you to the point where you are now, which is you're almost there, aren't you, with it? You're almost there. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, in reverse order, I can see the light, but it could be a train. <laughs> um, there is still an awful lot to do. Yeah. But it's in hand. I mean, what stadium that runs oval racing has to have six sets of evacuation stairs to evacuate a grandstand onto the track in case of emergency in four minutes. Um, we have had to design them. Graham Robson's been a great help uh, with a CAD design because you have to check them for P ratios, load ratios. Um, along with the Andrews family who've helped to construct the prototype. I mean, I've no idea yeah. what the final cost of it is going to be. Um, we fitted a prototype a week ago, which worked successfully. It sort of unlocked and fell into place in a minute. Um, we've got Bradford Council coming on Tuesday, where we're fitting the final design. And hopefully we can jog on and put six of those in, because yeah. we've got to have six sets of evacuation steps. It's problems like that that were not easily foreseeable. Yeah. Um, you know, developed as the project has arisen. It's not just for fire, it's for terrorism. Uh, yeah. And we have to abide as though we were Manchester United under the Green Guide. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, all the barriers we had to have stress tested before we even started work. Right. Um, it, it's not like any other, like opening a new track at Stoke or wherever. It's been mammoth. There's a lot, an awful lot to do. Um, you know, this weekend I'm using catching up on, on, on paperwork as the first opportunity. And we'll be crashing in again next week. I mean, there's, there's so, so much still to do. Facilities at the stadium, we've now got scaffolding on. Um, 
sort of the touch dang bar, etc. works now. Started in earnest on that. Working actually, the south stand, which you'll see next week in the hospitality boxes. Um, later on during April, there's, there's been a full refurbishment of, of the floodlights. Yeah. Um, we'll be there, but we've also used the opportunity of the delay to do more work. Yeah. Um, this is where, which is is heartening. I mean, we've spent a fortune, but what's helped us to do more is over 500 people kindly donated, you know, and raised a phenomenal sum of over £13,000 in donations as friends of Odson. They'll be recognised, you know, we've got a huge board going up in the stadium. But without that, you know, it's enabled us, us to top it up to do even more. Yes. So, you know, we, we you know, it, it, it does fill you with some confidence and enthusiasm and it extremely gratefully, you know, appreciated, received and we've been able to do more beyond what our budget was. Yeah. Brilliant, Steve. Thank you for that. And yeah, absolutely. Look forward to uh, to seeing it, it next week. Um, well, I've got you, if I don't mind. So I mentioned the Formula One uh, fixture list was released. So we've got 41 dates. It seemed to have landed really well in the sport and there seems to be a real buzz um about it this year it's it, certainly from the drivers um was it was it hard to kind of put that together in the, the time frame you'd got and sort of run from may to november i think ironically as i usually construct the draft if you like template um this was probably the easiest uh -huh. um we, we, you know we managed to do it in about three days with cooperation without even having a zoom call um it we obviously ha left a little bit of a pause because of promoter fatigue from numerous meetings that we've had and, and, and other things going on um, to understand the government advice and uh, leave it for a couple of weeks to see what unfolds. But basically we sat down on a Friday afternoon, did a template, uh, trying to restore meetings or move them, you know, to sort of agree an opening date on the 22nd of May, which was the first time we sort of realistically allowed a crowd in um back it, it, it was reasonably simplistic in some ways to juggle a few fixtures and create some speed weekends which i'm sure will be popular uh with fans um so we've been able to fit in um quite a compact but i think exciting season um inca race you know we had one or two comp compromises when you've got tra tracks of their own that opposite sides of the country but you know, full credit to Speedworth uh, and Gavin. Um, we soon unlocked and resolved, you know, issues there. So re in effect, you know, starting at late Friday afternoon, conversations over the weekend, back and forth. It was actually completed for Tuesday. Brilliant. The easiest one there. Yeah. If it can be as easy as next year, it'll be brilliant. <laughs> um, I guess. I guess. Sort of. You know. I'd say it was well received. Um, other than the world final uh, that, that wasn't identified on there, a couple of omissions. So, uh, no Scotland this year, uh, and no Bristol, which people kind of thought about. I think that the, the, the problems obviously we want we want to go to Scotland. Uh, it's very very important, I believe, to you know to Briska and the, the huge support we get from Scotland. However, with their uncertainties at the time of planning the fixture list. It could have been even later, we, you know, when they're starting in Scotland. Um, I'm certainly welcoming Craig's back with a with a condensed fixture list uh, and trying to fit in what we've got to make the best of it. It just did not provide the opportunity this year, so it's yeah. something to revisit next year. Okay, brilliant. And and um, Bristol has been talked about, hasn't it, as as kind of maybe uh, having a Formula One meeting. Was that kind of considered, or is that again maybe next year? Maybe next year, again, you know, if you look at the construction of the fixture list, um, whilst there's the odd weekend sort of off, you know, it, it's difficult to squeeze these in and with the dynamics of travel. Yeah. So, you know, we came up with what we thought would be the most popular, you know, for drivers and fans. Um, and at some point, you've, you've got to draw a line unless we started extending the season to, into later in November, which isn't ideal. And who knows what's going to come next November, you know, in terms of restrictions, etc. Hopefully we can keep safe and be out of it. But you've no idea what's, what the autumn's going to bring. 
Yeah, no, of course. Brilliant. Thank you. And I guess the last thing um, around the fixtures, Frank Freeman Jr. sent me a text. He wants to know when the Chase final is going to be run because apparently he's got some unfinished business or something to sort uh, out. Apparently so, yeah. <laughs> well, shall we reveal it now or next week? Which would you prefer? Let's do it next week. So we could do World Final and Chase Final next week. How's about that? That'd be a good... I, 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 we have had a discussion about it with the BSCDA and uh, with, with, with David and Ben. So we have got a resolution on that one. Quite excited about it, uh, but we'll keep teasing. Good. Uh, Steve, thank you so much for your time this evening. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I think I'd just like to end. Um, it's been a diff difficult year for everybody. You know, that we've got a lot of people in the sport um, that, you know, some of us are not going to see anymore. You know, the, the, uh, it really hit me about Mark Andrews. Um, mm. Recently really did hit me about that. And one of the things we're doing at Bradford is we, we are tying up with the community, you know, sort of a charity on that front to, get to, to provide help. But I think everybody has been in our sport for the last 12 months together. Um, the community spirit, the support, the support for each other, support for, uh, for for promoters. And I'd just like to end by thanking them for that support. It's helped us get through. And certainly for me and Jackie to sort of get on with this project without it, I think, um, you know, we might have been in a darker place. But, so thank you to everybody. I mean, the enormous support for Bradford, obviously for many, it was disappointing that uh, the tickets sold out so quickly. And even though we have rearranged the dates, there's still a huge demand. We have now been talking to the council uh, and about the pathway out of this. So we are pleased to announce that uh, we have a, another small release of tickets that we're issuing via StarTracks.info, uh, nine o'clock Monday morning. Uh, so that will, that will be tickets available because both opening meetings are sold out, but they will be able to buy them for the 22nd of May, which is the Stanwood celebration. And there are some tickets available from Monday for the 31st of May. And tickets for the next two Bradfords will also be on sale in Sheffield from Monday. So hopefully grab them while you can, because there will be none available on the day. No. Cheers, Steve. Thank you for that. And, and thank you for your time this evening. So um, there you have it, everybody. A brilliant catch up with Steve. And tune in next Saturday night where we will bring you the confirmation of the 2021 World Final Venue and confirmation of where the Chase Final will be held. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Cheers, Steve.